Okay, everybody, welcome back. My name is Bill, this is Yo-Yo Tech. Today we're continuing along in a bit of a series we're doing with OpenHab and how we can go about setting it up. We have done one video already where we did a very simple UI-based setup. Uh, the goal here was to compare how similar and how easy it was to use OpenHab if you're considering it against other uh, commercial solutions like SmartThings or Wink or Vera. Um, we've also done a video and we've talked about the UI rules engine. This is the all web-driven uh, engine that is new in OpenHab and you're able to go in and create rules uh, without any command line or any configuration. Today I want to step onto another topic that is pretty important to everybody um, and that is Z-Wave. <laughs> Uh, Z-Wave is something that is used by many different uh, home automation systems. SmartThings, Wink, Vera, they all connect to Z-Wave. Uh, if you're using it on OpenHab, one of the things you are going to need is a uh, Z-Wave-based key, just like this one. This is an AOTech uh, Z-Wave Generation 5 USB stick. Uh, super simple. Uh, I have links to these down below if you're interested, if you don't have one. The way Z-Wave works is you need one receiver that's going to go into the computer you have running OpenHab and then you can have as many devices as you want on your network. Um, there is a limit, it's hundreds though, so uh, two, 255 might even be more. Um, so anyways, this uses USB on your per computer and you just plug that in. So let's get right down to this. I'm assuming you have your Z-Wave sensor plugged into your computer right now. What you're going to want to do is open up a Chrome browser, uh, head back to localhost full colon 8080, which is going to bring up the user interface. We're going to choose paper and we're going to head on down to the add-in section. Once we get there, we will click add-ons and we will click bindings and we're going to scroll right to the bottom of the list and we're looking for one called Z-Wave Binding. Now, be careful, there is another one called Z-Way Binding. We're not gonna use that one today. It actually has to do with Z-Wave, but it's not the, not the one we're going to use. I want you to go ahead and click Install on the Z-Wave Binding with a V. We're gonna give that a few seconds to go. And once it is installed, we are going to jump up to Inbox. And in Inbox, we will click on the little plus symbol and of course you notice now that you have uh, all of your different bindings so you can specify which one you can search for, which one you want to search for. We're going to go ahead and we're going to choose Z-Wave binding. And instead of searching, this is going to bring up our Z-Wave serial controller. And when we click on that, it is going to open up the details for this specific device. The actual controller is a device itself in your system. So, what we need to do here is we just need to tell OpenHab where your Z-Wave controller is. To do that, uh, you're going to go down underneath configuration parameters and you're going to go under port configurator and you want to do the drop down there and you're going to see uh, if you're on a Mac similar to me you're going to see something that says USB modem. Uh, you can do the CU-USB modem and that should be the right one for your computer. Now, if you're on a different platform, if you're on Windows or you're on Linux or Raspberry Pi running Linux, uh, you're gonna see a different serial port. You're gonna have to play around a little bit with that and figure out which one it is. Typically, it's gonna be something to do with USB since it is a USB port. I will try to list on my website all of the different ones that I know and OpenHab site has a lot of resources there. It can be different on different systems based on what distribution of Linux you're running, on Windows, what serial port it's emulating, things like that. So go ahead and choose that. Quickly look through here the parameters. There's nothing else we really need to set. We're going to leave everything at the default and click on the little check mark or the add up at the top of the uh, screen. After you've done this, we're going to just click right back on in inbox and we are going to do search for things again and we are going to click the Z-Wave binding again, only this time it is going to jump in, it's actually going to start looking for Z-Wave devices. Uh, one of the interesting things about this Z-Wave device is it actually stores on it all of the associations it makes with different devices in your network. So the first time that you pair it with the device, it remembers that. You can take it in and out of your computer, you can use it anywhere, it's always going to remember that until you specifically tell it to forget one of those using an exclude command. 
So when I did mine here, you notice right away it came up with three different nodes. Um, and that's how it's referred to in Z-Wave. Each device you add is considered a node. They'll start at one and sequentially count up as you add them to your system. Uh, node one, by the way, is your USB device. So you can see here it's searching and after a few seconds it's actually going to identify one of them and tell me that it is a Z-Wave Multisensor 6 and this is because while it's searching it's also trying to reach out to them on the network and talk to those devices and figure out what they are. Um, Z-Wave node 2 and 3 in this particular one I don't have plugged in, I don't have them online right now so nothing is responding to them. Z-Wave node 4 which is that multi-sensor and I had set up previously is there and, and was found no problem. Now, anytime throughout this process, you can go ahead just like in any other binding and you can click the little check mark next to the devices that you want to add. And if you want, you can go ahead and click the little eye with a slash through it to ignore the devices you don't want. And that is pretty much it. That's how you get your actual Z-Wave network up and running. Really quickly, if you jump over to configuration in your menu and you go to things, you're going to be able to scroll right to the bottom there and you'll actually see the Z-Wave items that it's added. So you've got Z-Wave Serial Controller, which is the USB device. You've got Z-Wave Node 4, which is a multi-sensor 6 device. And in this example here, I actually have Z-Wave Node 5, um, which is actually a new device, which it was not able to identify. So if I click on that, you're going to see it actually tells me that it's found a device, it's been able to talk to a device, but it just doesn't know what it is. And this often happens when there's really new uh, Z-Wave devices that are on your network. Um, what happens is every manufacturer, whether it's SmartThings, whether it's OpenHab, the maintainer of the Z-Wave database has to add all of these devices to it. So it usually just takes a little bit of an update. So let's back out of that and we can go ahead and take a look at the Z-Wave Multi or the, the Z-Wave Multi-Sensor 6 by AOTech. Um, and you can see here that this one has been detected. It actually has a little description of what it's all about. And if you scroll down, you're going to see the channels. And these are the ways that you can interact with this device. Final, what I want to show you here is jump over to control. And again, let's scroll all the way down to the bottom. And you can see that that Z-Wave uh, Node 4, the multi-sensor 6, is there. It's already started to read off the values. Uh, humidity is 29, ultraviolet 0, temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, luminance is 0, motion and tamper have not been triggered, and as I mentioned, the battery 100%. What I want to do next is actually head on back into your inbox, and what we're going to do here is I have a Brand new, uh, brand new motion sensor from AOTech. This is the Multi Sensor 6, so it's the same one that I had before, it's just a new one. Uh, these are fantastic sensors. I've done a lot of video on AOTech product. Uh, feel free to check them out. Just did one on a water sensor, a water leak sensor detector recently. Take a look at that. I also use the uh, Wallmote, which is a cool little remote control here. Um, fantastic, and if you've watched my video on this one, Quick little update, the battery on this is something people have been asking about and it's been fantastic. It's been well over six months now since I did that video and I have not had to recharge it yet. So um, definitely a good thing. I wasn't able to report on that in my original video, but there you go, you got an update now. So let's jump back into your inbox and we're gonna go ahead and click the plus again and we'll click on Z-Wave binding and we've now got it searching. So all we're gonna do is push the button on the back of this and sure enough, there we go, node six, Z-Wave node six and it knows it's a multi-sensor. I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus. Just like I mentioned, you can rename it here if you want to, I usually leave it the same and there we go, it has been added. Let's jump back over to configuration Let's scroll to the bottom and sure enough, there it is, node six. When we go in, all the same channels again. Uh, sensor, humidity, ultraviolet, temperature, luminance, alarm, alarm, and battery level. Let's jump back to control. And sure enough, there it is again. Whoops. And sure enough, there it is. Uh, you can see some of the settings have already been read. It knows the temperature is 17. I guess it's a little cold in here. 
uh, batteries at 100% like I mentioned it would be and you can actually see that the binary sensor is detected motion so it knows we're here and that's it. One of the reasons I wanted to make sure we go through this is because Z-Wave is super useful. There's so many devices and so many manufacturers out there that make devices for this. You have everything from door locks to plugs to light switches to uh, water shutoff valves. I mean huge range of products and the nice thing is they're available in a lot of big box stores so come Christmas time I'm always buying little plug-in ones to put in my Christmas trees and other various Christmas decorations we do they come in super handy and they're super easy to work with and manage so guys this week was a simple one but I think it's a big one Z-Wave is definitely something that a lot of people ask about um, I have more information below uh, links to all the products I talked about today I also have a link to my website, yoyonose.com, where I have some more information. I will try to put some information there for uh, serial ports and ways you may find it and anything else that I talked about today, links, things like that. So that's it for today. Hopefully you guys like this. Uh, again, as always, thumbs up are great. Comments if you have anything to say about this, if you have questions, you want to know more. Anything else you'd like to know about OpenHab, start letting me know in the comments. I'm trying to keep this going as a bit of series, a bit of a series. And if you guys tell me what you want, I'll try to focus on those things first. That's all I got. We'll see you in the next one.